Now let's see different types of pumps. One pump is there. Uh, let's say pump types. So pumps. So basically, we divide in two types. One will be like positive displacement type. displacement type another will be kinematic kinetic okay so positive displacement type pump when you are saying your heart is a positive displacement pump okay so human heart okay so it is taking certain amount of fluid same amount of fluid is delivering when it is expanding and contracting volume a same volume a delivered same volume taking same volume delivering so fixed amount of fluid is taking and delivering and if your body needs higher amount of fluid what the body will do because heart is controlled by actually brain although we say like everything based on heart uh, and poetic language or creative writing language but heart also controlled by your brain okay so if body needs more fluid for example you are running okay and you need more fluid what will do what will do your dhadkane your the heart beats will be increasing number of beats that means one time if is giving x volume per minute maybe uh, 72 times or 100 times a beating will be there so 72 times 100 times means 72 times it will be delivering fluid okay and if you are running your heart beat will be increasing so that time it will be pumping more your beating rate will be more so total volume of fluid will be more so same volume of fluid will be delivered and because beating rate is increasing so total amount of fluid will be increasing okay so heart is there your uh, injection syringe that is also reciprocating pump actually you are taking certain amount of fluid same amount of fluid are delivering okay one time but it's also pumping uh, so syringe injection needles is c y r i n g e syringe or cycle pumper one time you are delivering certain amount of air but if you are doing very fast quick 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 so in that case you deliver more actually okay so in positive displacement pump if you increasing pulsating rate or rotation rate so in that case you deliver more fluid okay so these are example so there will be reciprocating pump normally it will be reciprocating term uh, pump uh, I will delete this one and will be rotary type. Rotary type pump, uh, reciprocating time pump, I said like injection syringe, heart, or cycle pumper. Okay, uh, or uh, your hand pump, water hand pump. Or you can find more example from your day-to-day -day life application a rotary type pump rotary type pump one is centrifugal centrifugal pump is not rotary type pump here as per my definition rotary pump is that positive displacement pump and it will be linked with your speed if you are changing speed your flow rate will change okay so the example is pcp you use for artificial lifting system progressive cavity pump progressive cavity pump okay uh, there will be scroll pump volute pump volute pump diaphragm pump okay so the, there are different types of pump pcp volute pump scroll pump diaphragm pump those are all comes under positive displacement type pump sometime it will be rotary sometime it will be uh, reciprocating sometime reciprocating pump uh, arrange such a way that it will be looking as rotary pump so normally this positive displacement pump will have very high pressure development uh, you can develop any amount of pressure using one reciprocating pump but flow rate will be very low lower amount of fluid will be delivered using the positive displacement pump but it will take certain amount of fluid the same amount of flu or fluid will be delivered so volumetric efficiency ideally it will be 100 percent there will be no losses volumetric losses other losses like friction losses will be there anyway uh, because whenever any machine is running 
there will be certain amount of loss which you cannot recover for example because of friction will be there molecular collisions will be there so that amount of energy you cannot recover so losses will be there every time okay so when the engineers or scientists who are designing new types of pumps or modifying or upgrading the pumps they will be considering how to reduce the losses okay uh, now kinematic pump or the pump which, uh, which will give energy due to uh, very high rotation for example centrifugal pump okay so basically centrifugal pump okay centrifugal pump is like this like if if i take this one if i rotate it okay if i rotate a very slow speed so it is doing like this but if i very rotate very high speed you see this end this tip of this pen is becoming almost horizontal right so because of centrifugal action this this end will be trying to move away from my hand okay and if flow uh, this rotation speed is low then it will be like this rotation is very high so it will be increasing like this okay and if i have certain mechanism that called impeller okay impeller will be having certain channel flow channel like this and impeller center this i if i is taking certain amount of fluid and if you rotate at very high speed the fluid will be going away from this one okay because of centrifugal action if you rotate at very high speed this impeller the because of centrifugal action fluid will be going away from the impeller now when fluid is going away you collect that high velocity fluid and deliver to somewhere else that is called centrifugal pump okay and there are several types of centrifugal pump axial flow mixed flow radial flow and there will be very small pump there will be very big pump there will be single stage pump there will be multi stage pump you can connect uh, serially several pumps or you can connect parallelly many pumps so in your artificial lifting system you connect one pump two pump three pump four pump one pump will be delivering a certain amount of pressure next pressure next pressure next pressure next pressure so finally 100 200 stages maybe two three story building equivalent to total length that much of uh, that that much of length is required to develop pressure maybe 5000 or 10000 pressure uh, bar pressure 10000 psi pressure uh, oh, 3 400 bar okay and if you can uh, connect that centrifugal pump properly then you can uh, lift well over fluid with present condition but centrifugal pump will have several restriction or limitations that we will discuss when we will discuss uh, ESP systems but positive displacement pump you are using for a well bore application that is one is called sucker rod pump sucker rod pump so how sucker rod pump works like you you have an hand pump for a uh, household application like in rural area the hand pump water supply system or your cycle pumper system i told roadside cycle shops they will have uh, that there is similar mechanism actually reciprocating action you are giving and you are lifting fluid or you are delivering fluid at high pressure another is pcp normally use progressive cavity pump so this is actually rotary type pump and later i will bring some model and i'll explain how does it work so if you rotate one rotor slowly it will take certain amount of fluid it will deliver the same amount of fluid continuously if you increase number of rotation then total amount of fluid will be increasing but pressure development will be same ideally we will have no losses actually in pcp or sucker rod pump but practically there will be certain limitations we will discuss later centrifugal pump again it is a multi-stage pump normally used in oil industry and it is very versatile high volume flow rate will be there but pressure development will be lower than positive displacement type pump okay because of the lower pressure development uh, many time we do not use centrifugal pump for example your high pressure application for fuel injection in engines so we normally we try to use positive displacement type pump but you want to uh, deliver high volume of water for your first floor uh, water cleaning purpose uh, so in that case centrifugal pump is okay very commonly used pump centrifugal pump on normal household applications okay radial axial head flow rate okay radial pump so centrifugal pump normally three types actually one will be radial type later i will bring some model i will explain actually the, this is just basic idea to give basic idea to you okay so centrifugal pump normally fluid will be coming like this this is shaft this is called shaft this is called impeller 
impeller. If shaft is rotating, the impeller will be rotating also. When impeller is rotating, the water or any fluid will be entering into the impeller. Impeller will have some cavity or channel. Through this channel, uh, fluid will enter and it will be moving upward. Okay. So, fluid entering actually axial to shaft. Okay. Water, if this is shaft, fluid is entering here. But finally, you see the fluid is entering and going perpendicular to the shaft. So, this is called radial flow. Okay. So, fluid direction, this is 90 degree. Okay. This is called radial flow impeller. Radial flow. Radial flow impeller will have higher pressure development, high head. Okay. But flow rate can be lower. Another type of impeller is there you call mixed flow impeller. So, I can draw similar figure. Okay. And fluid will be entering like this and exiting like this. Okay. So, you can see this is almost 45 degree. Okay. So, similar sort of arrangement. So, this is called mixed flow impeller. Later, I will discuss uh, in details and another is called axial flow impeller. So, impeller is like this and fluid is entering like this. Okay. So, this is 0 degree. Okay. Fluid entering parallel to shaft. So, fluid and shaft angle is becoming 0. So, this is called axial flow pam. Okay. So, radial flow pump will be commonly used for your ESP application, electric submersible pumping application. In some cases, you use mixed flow impeller, but normally surface application many times people will be using. Axial flow normally it is not being used in oil industry because it is developing very low pressure, pressure or head in uh, fluid mechanics or pumping uh, systems design. We use the term head instead of pressure. Head means how much water column it can rise, it can raise. Let us say one impeller is raising uh, one bar pressure. Okay, you take one uh, pressure measuring device and you see one bar pressure that means equivalent to uh, 10 meter water head. So, we say head 10 meter. Okay, so pressure or head will be high, uh, okay, pressure will be low, flow rate will be high. Here, pressure is high, flow rate is low. Okay, if you are using radial flow impeller then you are getting very high pressure, flow rate will be lower. But if you are using axial flow system, in that case pressure will be very low, very high flow rate will be there. So, to mix up two concepts, radial and axial, people develop remixed flow impeller. So, that will have little bit higher pressure and little bit higher flow rate also. But normally I said oil industry uses basically radial, sometime mixed flow impeller. Okay. <coughs> and the out exit pressure or outlet pressure of the impeller we say head not bar or something we say like meter of water equivalent column of water head okay the term is used we have centrifugal pump radial centrifugal axial mixed flow now which one use to use where okay let's see the specific speed okay one formula is there for a specific speed where n is rpm Okay, n is rpm, q is flow rate, let us say meter cube per second may be meter. Okay. So, n s is not dimensionless, here you can see. Okay, n s is having a dimension. Okay. So, if I draw one line for specific speed, uh, exact value you have to check from books. Okay. Some value will be there a, b, c, d. So, very low specific speed. A specific okay. So, very low specific speed will be like reciprocating pump, reciprocating or positive displacement type pumps will have very low specific speed, then it will come radial flow impeller, radial flow impeller, then very high flow rate you need axial flow impellers. Axial flow rotating machine. 
रेसिपोकेटिंग और प्रोग्रेसिव कैविटी पम्प और गियर पम्प स्क्रू पम्प डायफ्राम पम्प दो विल बी कमिंग अंडर लो फ्लो रेट कंडीशन एंड देयर हेड विल बी वेरी हाई सो लो फ्लो रेट ओके लो फ्लो रेट एंड हेड हाई फ्लोरेट लो हेयर फ्लोरेट फ्लोरेट हाई हेड लो ओके सो इफ यू आर यूजिंग सर्टन पम्प फॉर सर्टन एप्लीकेशन देन यू हैव टू नो हाउ मच फ्लोरेट यू नीड हाउ मच प्रेशर यू नीड बेस्ड ऑन दैट यू हैव टू डिसाइड विच टाइप ऑफ पम्प यू नीड फॉर योर एप्लीकेशन मे बी इन सर्फेस एप्लीकेशन और आर सब सर्फेस एप्लीकेशन एंड दिस स्पेसिफिक स्पीड गिवस दैट आइडिया वट टाइप ऑफ पम्प शुड बी यूज फॉर विच कंडीशन इफ यू वेरी हाई फ्लो रेट कंडीशन then you can go mixed floor or axial flow condition but if a very high pressure requirement for example sakara pump they are using 10000 feet what uh, water well bore depth so 10000 feet well bore depth is there and very high pressure required but very low flow rate is required for example gas well deliquefaction maybe per day five barrels uh, of liquid is getting deposited or liquid is getting held up at the bottom so that liquid you have to remove otherwise your flow rate will not be proper so to remove that small amount of gas held up Yeah, that liquid held up at the bottom you need you do not need actually centrifugal pump centrifugal pump is high flow rate relatively higher flow rate right so in that case you use reciprocating pump very simple per few strokes per day or maybe continuously you run with very small flow rate that be okay okay but in certain case like 5000 barrel per day you need uh, pressure uh, flow rate so in that case if you are trying to use sakarad pump that will be too high flow rate for sakarad pump in that case you have to use centrifugal pump centrifugal pump or radial flow centrifugal pump is these are centrifugal pump actually these are centrifugal pump these are radial flow uh, mixed flow okay radial flow mixed flow axial flow these are centrifugal pump this uh, and among these three very high flow rate you can use uh, axial flow but normally for artificial lifting application we do not use axial flow pump because too low head so too low head will not help all the flow rate may be high so in if a very high flow rate in well from well bore we can use maybe a gas lift or other mechanism okay so before you understand centrifugal pump or positive displacement pump uh, i developed some experiment facility in it madras so the experiment facility is like this this is actual experiment facility this is one tank okay so tank is connected to one pump pump is here okay this is pipe and there is one motor this is pump okay and from pump fluid is going like this it is going like this it is going like this from there okay from there water is falling like this okay this is continuous loop and to do the experiment we put one flow meter here you can see flow meter and variable frequency drive here in the, on the wall it is fixed vfd or variable frequency drive why variable frequency drive is required because if you want to check your pumping performance at different speed i told like heart beating rate changing so your flow rate changing when you are running you need more fluid flow or more blood flow in your body so heart beating rate will be increasing right so brain is controlling that so in our case uh, to control our brain is here vfd so vfd will be give, will be giving different frequency to the motor so motor frequency will be uh, electrical frequency is changed so motor speed will change because of electric frequency change when electric frequency change motor speed change motor speed change means pump speed change pump speed change means my flow rate and pressure will be changed okay so and if i see the line diagram i have tank okay this is tank so tank is having one pipe directly going to my pump pump to one pressure gauge here pressure gauge and flow control valve is here one flow control valve is here then i have one flow meter flow meter to water falling like this okay 
why I developed this uh, experiment setup? Actually, I wanted to check uh, the fluid flow under different uh, emuls emulsion condition and if I have emulsion flow or multiphase flow, let us say gas also injected there, then what will be the performance centrifugal pump? What will be the best design for centrifugal pump which will be working for well bore under multiphase or emulsion condition? Let us say I have 10 percent water cut, 5 percent water cut or I have 5 percent uh, gas volume fraction or 10 percent gas volume fraction, then if we change this gas volume fraction or water cut, centrifugal pump or axial pump or radial pump, whatever or uh, uh, PC progressive gravity pump, the performance is changed. If performance is changing, then what will be the best design for our pump? So, we are trying to design, optimize, experiment. So, lots of things we are trying to do. So, this experiment how to do it? Okay. So, in experiment, first when you are doing experiment, you have to draw HQ curve. H means head or pressure and Q means flow rate. How to get flow rate? I have one flow meter. Flow meter will give flow rate. Okay. So, here is flow meter is will give and H how to get H? I have pressure gauge. Okay. So, pressure gauge will give H value. Now, initially let us open the valve, which valve? The flow control valve is there. Okay. So, open the flow control valve. Now, fluid is not getting rest. Switch on the VFD, it will give electricity to the motor, motor will be start running. When motor is running, pump will be delivering fluid, pump is delivering fluid means if you do not have any, uh, any restriction at the delivery pipe, this is called delivery pipe, delivery pipe, this is called suction pipe. Okay. If we do not have any uh, restriction in the delivery pipe, then fluid flow will be maximum. So, initially we assume there is no restriction in the delivery pipe and your pressure gauge will be showing very low pressure. Okay. So, that time your flow rate is very low, uh, very high. Now, if you are using centrifugal pump, real flow, axial flow, mixed flow, that type of pump, then you close the valve, this flow control valve, there is one flow control valve, you turn little bit. Okay. So, flow will be restricted, flow restricted means your flow rate will be little bit down and your pressure gauge will show little bit higher pressure. Again, you increase this turn. Okay, so you are slowly you are closing the flow path, you're restricting. You are choking. So when you are choking, your pressure will increase in the pipe. Okay, before pump and the delivery uh, flow control valve between pump and flow control valve, the pressure gauge, pressure gauge is so higher pressure. Pressure higher, pressure higher, pressure higher. Slowly pressure higher is there, and your flow meter will check how much flow rate you are having. So, your flow meter will check flow and you will get this curve. This is called HQ curve. This is called HQ curve, curve for centrifugal pump and this is done for one spe spe speed. Now, you change VFD frequency again. When you change, let us say you reduce frequency, then again if you draw the curve, curve will be like this. Again you reduce, again you reduce. So, if you reduce uh, frequency, the motor speed will be reduced, impeller speed reduced, reduced speed means impeller is rotating lower speed. So, it is giving less centrifugal force that means your head and flow rate will be going down, head or pressure development and flow rate will go down. Okay. Again you change impeller speed using your VFD or variable frequency controller further, further up, up. So, you will get curve like this. Okay. You can get many curves like this. It is called HQ curve for centrifugal pump. Okay. Now, instead of centrifugal pump, if I use one positive displacement pump, let us say sucker pump or PCP, so how the curve will look like? Same way, I will try to do experiment. Okay. So, I will take Q, I will take H. This is called positive displacement pump. Positive displacement pump. Okay. For positive, what I will do? Initially, everything uh, that flow control valve is open con completely. You get very high flow rate. Then you close a little bit flow control valve your head or pressure will be increasing, but flow rate will not change. Again, you close a little bit, flow rate not change. 
again you change again you change flow rate not changing so you are getting complete almost vertical curve okay so if you are using positive displacement pump such as sucker rod pump or your progressive cavity pump you will get curve almost vertical okay that means it can develop any amount of pressure but if you are using centrifugal pump you can see the pressure is limited it is going up to certain limit if you see the sq curve of centrifugal pump pressure is limited but in positive displacement pump srp or pcp your pressure is not limited so you can go infinite amount of pressure okay so now the see the difference if i take one human heart also you will see that same tendency as positive displacement pump because when you are running same amount of fluid you are delivering and your number of heartbeat increasing and you are increasing volume flow rate okay if you are not changing that heartbeat you are restricting then flow rate will be same but your pressure will be more okay but uh, when you are running you are actually basic higher volume flow rate that's why your beating will be increasing okay so one impeller whatever we tested in our laboratory is shown here okay this is one impeller later i will bring one model and i'll show and i'll explain okay so how to draw hq curve okay so i already told hq curve means flow rate okay for centrifugal pump i have seen this one centrifugal centrifugal pump which is rotating at very high speed and used for common household applications but other type of pump i told is completely vertical okay this is called positive displacement displacement pump okay now how to draw it so let's say you have one data table serial number 1 2 3 4 you take some data okay uh, so what you do flow rate head then uh, your electric input so initially valve is completely open so you can get very high flow rate let's say 10 head will be almost zero okay and electric power uh, consumption may be 10 10 volt uh, 10 watt or something okay now you close little valve, valve for centrifugal pump okay so flow rate will be little bit reduced h will be increasing e will be maybe little bit increasing because you are restricting so maybe it will be increasing so that way you take data so finally you produce your curve for centrifugal pump but if you see same curve centrifugal but positive displacement positive displacement so same uh, data type if i want to produce then q and h so q will be same every time okay h will be changing 0 2 4 okay so h will be changing continuously and you will be producing this figure and if you take electrical data also and if you calculate efficiency then your efficiency curve will be like this for centrifugal pump okay for centrifugal pump efficiency curve eta this is efficiency efficiency curve will be like this why efficiency curve will be like this because it will be consuming efficiency at certain point uh, your efficiency will be very high and if you are changing the valve continuously then finally your efficiency will be down so you will have one best efficiency point okay or best so centrifugal pump will have one best efficiency point so where you have to run your pump so if you are running your pump less uh, left side or right side of the best efficiency point your electric consumption will be more maybe it will create cavitation and other issues so normally the designers or engineers will be trying to run your the pump at bep or best efficiency point if you want to change your pressure or flow rate maybe you can use vfd or you can change the whole pumping systems and here when you are doing experiment uh, one call caution is there do not close the valve completely 
why because for example positive displacement pump your uh, your pressure line is going up 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 vertically up right so if you close the valve so pressure will be too high this flow rate is same and your pump is continuously running and your pressure is showing high 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 it will go to infinity right so that time your motor can fail electric uh, the piping system can burst or some leakage can occur so accident can happen so whenever you are doing experiment for any centrifugal pump or reciprocating pump or positive displacement type pump then you do not close the flow control valve completely uh, when it will be reaching up to certain level then stop and draw the spark smart card that, that, that is okay for example centrifugal pump when q and h curve is drawing and curve moving up 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 going towards h so don't close completely so keep some gap and stop your experiment and say okay done now just manually you attach and if you have completely proper safety system uh, then you can use that is okay but for normal laboratory application in india whatever laboratory practice we do please do not try to close the valve completely okay that will be for safer instruction again whenever you are doing experiment in laboratory you have to follow certain safety protocol if you are not using certain safety protocol there might be certain issue of accidents so we don't want that un <coughs> unwanted issues inlet pressure so when you are using any type of pumping system centrifugal pump or a positive resource pump gas lift or jet pump or uh, okay so you need certain amount of pressure before the pump okay so let's say one reservoir okay and you have one tubing reservoir perforated here and well head is here and you have choke okay now p r p w f and you are putting one pump here and your let's say pressure is so low that liquid can reach up to this level okay so what will happen there is a pump you switch on pump will try to suck the fluid if pump is trying to sucking the fluid what will happen that formation volume factor uh, solution gas oil ratio can you can remember that if you are reducing pressure some gas can come out from the system if gas is coming out the centrifugal pump will be having uh, will be facing difficulty of pumping liquid sucrot pump will have certain difficulty called gas interference some other type of pump also will have some difficulty so you need certain initial pressure so that pump should not get your free gas or dissolved gas okay so uh, normal npsh uh, not net positive suction head in centrifugal pump pumping term they call net positive suction head net positive net positive suction head normal water application also when you are running centrifugal pump in minimum inlet pressure must be there otherwise the water will get evaporated and it will be entangled with impeller and there will be cavitation erosion and some other issues and vibration noise many issues will be coming but when you are using in oil and gas well bore so in that case again when pressure is going down because of this you are not maintaining a certain amount of pressure the gas will be coming out from your uh, liquid so the gas will be interfering again the pumping operation then the pumping operation is interfered it will be resulting vibration noise cavitation erosion and maybe some other issues also so you have to maintain certain amount of pressure especially centrifugal pump needs higher amount of inlet pressure because it is saying sucking high amount of fluid but whenever you are using sacred pump or pcp and other type of pumps uh, like say pcp sacred pump uh, so they, they they are very low flow rate pumps low flow rate pumps is it is pumping let's say five barrel per day but in the 24 hours maybe five barrel will be liquid will be deposit uh, coming into well bore and slowly you are filling the cavity or gap or void area and you are pumping so that may be okay but when you are pumping using centrifugal pump that will be delivering very high amount of fluid so high amount of fluid maybe reservoir is not delivering that in that rate so in that case one cavity uh, gap will be created pressure drop will be there when pressure drop is there free gas will be coming out your dissolved gas will be coming out uh, so that will be a very big problem for your uh, pumping operations so that's why the term centrifugal uh, centrifugal pump fugal pump needs uh, one term net positive suction head so later we will discuss in details when we will be teaching you uh, esp systems 
affinity law. So pump uh, normally the designers uh, consider the affinity law. Affinity law is like this: flow rate will be changing if you, uh, speed is changed. Similarly, pressure will be changing if you, uh, speed is changed. Or uh, sometimes trimming of impeller is also possible. Like say, uh, impeller 10, 20 percent uh, diameter. If you change, then your performance will be changing. So that also many engineers or designers will be do. But as a production engineer, you don't have that much of scope for modifying any impeller system because you are focusing more on production side not on design of impeller. So, surface pump and surface subsurface pump difference I told that subsurface pump will have dissolved gases free gases and you have very narrow space. So, uh, well bore properties and narrow well bore uh, formation volume factor and uh, formation volume factor is solution gas oil ratio those things also will be a uh, one parameter is in well well bore normally the diameter will be like 5 6 inch maximum okay but when we are using certain pump at surface your diameter is not restricted so you can use very large diameter pump also for example uh, uh, esp will be 100 200 stages for uh, 500 bar pressure 400 bar pressure but in that same pressure you can generate on the surface using layer lower number of stages why you can use larger diameter of impeller so when you are using larger diameter you have larger space so in that case your uh, number of stages will be reduced so your life will be less problematic but in well bore you have very restricted area so restricted area you have to fit your uh, impeller systems diffuser systems your protector systems your motor system you must have cable so that is more complex area again if you have solution gas oil ratio uh, solution gas and it is creating two phase flow or uh, uh, two phase flow when it is starting pumping or if you have certain corrosive gas also then multiple issues will be coming. So, that is more difficult than surface production system. In surface when you are getting fluid, you have lots of option to modify the fluid also. But in well bore, you have very restricted area. So, your options are very less. So, the task is more challenging. So, in this course, I will try to explain how engineers or scientists are handling the well bore pumping problems when depleted reservoir is there and you have to get more production or you have to make the well economical. So, priming and full burn. So, you are using the centrifugal pump or ESP or P ESP, PCP, SRP. So, in some cases you have to fill the pump first then you have to start running if you do not feel initially then there will be multiple issues for example <coughs> if you see centrifugal pump centrifugal pump is handling liquid and when you are giving very high rotation of the impeller because of the high rotation fluid particle will go out of the impeller so fluid means liquid liquid will be high density so it will be creating more force and it will be sucking fluid it will be delivering but instead of liquid if you are giving gas so what will happen you create rotation centrifugal force but centrifugal force because the gas particle uh, the gas particle will have very low density because of low density will not be able to suck the fluid so because of the because of that your pump system can fail so what you have to do you have to fill the pump first with liquid then you have to switch on electricity and it will work so this term is called priming filling the pump filling the pump before starting okay filling with liquid whatever liquid you are pumping for the water if you are pumping then fill with water if you are pumping oil fill with oil then you switch on it will start uh, uh, delivering fluid okay and many cases you use food valve uh, especially when you are using the pump for your agriculture application or maybe surface production application for example, uh, drilling mud handling systems or somewhere. So, in that case you may need to use one foot valve, foot valve is like this you have one pump and you have let us say some tank and you are sucking fluid so, um, this is suction pipe and you are delivering somewhere right. 
So suction pipe if there is one debris or something, so that should not enter into the suction pipe. If you debris or something entering, then it will be interfering your impeller operation. So it will be clogging the impeller path or it will be creating more erosion. So in that case what you do, one valve you create, one way valve, okay. So that valve will allow only one way flow. You when you are filling the impeller area for priming purpose, so priming purpose you are giving water, so that water should not go out to your tank, okay. So this food valve will have one way valve. So it when you are uh, giving water from top side, so it will be closing the path. When it is sucking fluid from well, uh, well bore or from tank, so it will be opening like this. Again you switch on switch off the pump, it will be closing the path. So when you are priming it, so the valve be closing the pipe, uh, the uh, suction pipe will be closed and you fill, 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 completely filled, switch on pump and when it is sucking fluid, the valve will be automatically opening. So it is one way valve and it will be operated op automatically, there will be no manual operation. So that is called foot valve. So it is required for priming operations and it will be uh, avoiding uh, to get into uh, to take other debris or other thing into your pumping systems because it will have a small small lots of pores so that pores will not allow the bigger particle to enter into your pumping systems suction and delivery i already told like if if i have one impeller okay so this is suction side this is delivery delivery V. This is delivery side. Okay. So, suction side, delivery side. So, suction side when fluid is sucking uh, by an impeller or any pumping system, so suction side will be limited. It may be maximum 10 feet of, for water, but if you have a uh, solution gas uh, there and if you are not maintaining pressure then suction side length must be lower or you must the impeller must be submerged into the liquid so that it the inlet pressure should not go down below this bubble point pressure if it is bubbling then it will be creating cavitation but delivery side there is no such restriction it will be de depending on your pump design number of stages so uh, what will be the length of delivery pipe it depends on your pump performance but suction side depends on your fluid properties if fluid is having lots of gas and bubble point pressure nearby your pumping operation area then there will be possibility of cavitation so you have to consider all these parts so thank you very much